welcome to the Insightful Professor. In an earlier video, we discussed how to install and configure Oracle Database 18C Express Edition. In that video, we discussed not only how to install the database, but the process for creating a CDB and a PDB. And then additionally, we talked about how to establish a connection that is create a TNS names entry to access the PDB. In a later video, we discussed the multi-tenant architecture introduced back in Oracle 12C. It's our intent in this current video to discuss how to create a new pluggable database, a new PDB within an existing environment. The create pluggable database SQL statement is used to create a PDB. The syntax of this statement provides alternative ways to create a pluggable database. One technique for creating a PDB is called cloning. A PDB can be cloned from the seed database, an application seed, a remote or local PDB, or a non-CDB. In this video, we'll explain how to create a PDB from the seed database. But first, let's consider why we might wish to create a PDB. The primary benefit of the multi-tenant architecture relates to consolidation of physical databases. Often an organization has multiple physical databases spread across a variety of machines, and the idea of consolidating these multiple databases from these separate computers into a single database on a single computer is one of the primary benefits offered by the multi-tenant architecture. The cost reduction for hardware results from this consolidation. It supports easier and more rapid movement of data and code, easier management and monitoring of the physical database, separation of data and code, and separation of duties between a PDB administrator and the CDB administrator. There are also benefits from a manageability perspective. These include easier upgrade of data and code by unplugging and plugging in a PDB, easier testing by using PDBs for development before plugging them into the production CDB, the ability to flash back an individual PDB to a previous SCN, and also the ability to set performance limits for memory and I.O. at the PDB level. I suggest that you refer to the Oracle Multi-Tenant Administrator's Guide to learn more about the benefits of the multi-tenant architecture. What we'll do next is log in to the Oracle 18C Express Edition system I have set up, which is the result of doing the basic install. We have a CDB called XE and a PDB called XE PDB1. We'll follow the steps of a workshop I have used in database administrator training. And with this workshop, what we'll do is create a new PDB within that environment. I've connected to our 18C XE database and we're going to do a little bit of checking things out before we move on. Notice that I connected sys as sysdba. I did not provide a host string. Therefore, we've connected to the CDB. Let's verify this by selecting from global name, and we see that we've connected to XE, and this is the CDB. Let's examine the existing PDBs by using the SQL plus command show PDBs. And we see we have two 
pluggable databases out there. PDB dollar sign seed is kind of the starter or template database that we'll be using. XEPDB1 is the existing pluggable database. We want to create a new one. Now, before we create this, what I'd like to do is find out a little bit more about where the files are for XEPDB1. What I want to do is to use the same naming format of the files that exist for the other PDB and also to create these files in a similar location. We'll use this con ID, which is three, for XEPDB1. And we'll create the query that says, show me the con ID to verify I have the right one, the names of the table spaces, and the names of the operating system files, the data files. We query CDB data files where the con ID is three. The output of this query reveals the location of all of the files for XEPDB1. I'll now use this information to create a directory for the files of the new pluggable database. So let's go into the operating system using the host command. And the first thing I'll do is make a new directory. So I'm going to make the directory in the same location, but I'm going to call it PDB2, the name that I'll use for my new pluggable database. The directory should be created. Let's confirm that by trying to change to that directory. So using the CD to change directory, if it works, that means the directory exists. So we're in good shape. Now let's return back to SQL Plus. Now I'll continue by creating the pluggable database. The pluggable database will have the name of PDB2, the user PDB2 admin will be the administrator for that pluggable database and will have a password of Oracle, all in lowercase. Will be assigned the DBA role when the user is created. I've specified the location here of the seed database and I'm going to use that to create the PDB2 database. This command may take a moment to run because it's going to be creating the new operating system files for this database. Okay, the database has been created. Let's explore things a little bit. I'm going to select PDB name and the status from CDB PDBs. It tells me I've got XEPDB1. Status is normal. The C database is normal. The PDB2 database currently has a status of new. This status indicates that the PDB has never been opened since it's been created. It must be opened in a read-write mode for Oracle to prepare processing needed to complete the integration of this PDB into the CDB and then mark it as normal. That integration will include updating the control file and other metadata that the CDB will use to acknowledge and know about the existence of this new PDB. Let's run a query to check the open mode of this PDB. And we see that currently its mode is mounted. Note also that a new service is created when the PDB is created. We can verify this by running yet another query. And we see that PDB2 now has a con ID of 4 and it exists as an active service. Let's examine the data files for this new PDB. We'll select the name from V$ 
data file where the con ID is equal to 4. And this will be for PDB2. And here are the files. And the directory is as we specified. And we have the system, sysox, and undo table space data files. Now what we'll do is we'll alter the pluggable database pdb2 and open it. So the new database must be opened in read-write mode for Oracle to be able to complete the integration of the new pdb. We can again show the connection name or the container name. So we show the container name. We're currently in root. We'll select the name and the open mode from V$ dollar sign PDBs. And now notice the status of PDB2. It's now listed as read-write. We can alter the current session and set the container equal to PDB2. Now we'll show the con name and the con ID, and sure enough, we are talking to PDB2. So note that at this point, we can only connect to PDB2 if we are a common user and change the container, which is exactly what we just did. To connect directly to PDB2, we'll need to update the tnsnames.ora file. But first, let's take a look at the users in this database and see which users are common users. And we see that most of the users in here are common users. But there is one which is not a common user, PDB2 admin. This name is unique to this particular database. It cannot move from database to database, as we could with system and sys and so forth. But what we have is the new administrator created specifically for this PDB when we created the pluggable database. This is not a common user. So we'll go to the menu and start the Net Configuration Assistant. And this is how we'll update the TNS names that are file. We'll select local net service name configuration, just as we did in our earlier video. We'll do an add. We'll select the service name of PDB2 TCP. And the host name, we'll just use local host. Port number is 1521. We'll do a test. And let's do the test with this new user. The new user is pdb2 underscore admin, and our password is Oracle in lowercase. Remember, that was specified in the create pluggable database statement. The test is successful. We'll apply this. We can set the service name as pdb2, or we can change it to something else. I'll call it new pdb2, and we're finished. So now I'll connect to the database and I'll connect as pdb2 admin password is oracle app and I'll use the new pdb2. We can again show the con name and the con ID. And there we are. So we have created the new pluggable database and we have updated the tnsnames.ora file to allow easy connection. And that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm.